Hello YouTube, this is VidHead85 and I'm going to get right into voter ID. Um, simply, um, the more I looked at voter ID, the more I've become convinced that it is simply a GOP-led um, uh, Republican-led assault on voter rights, especially of minority, of um, people of color, especially. And proponents of voter ID will tell you that massive election fraud is happening, but I'm not aware of any stories of this so-called reality. Um, it, it didn't stop an Indiana official from, from being registered to vote in two places, and the, won't stop the trouble with registration from being a reason that people are turned away at the polls. Also, a veteran's government issue ID was turned away because it lacked an address. Now, some things that are worth noting, um, Rep. Representative Mike Terzai of Pennsylvania, the, um, the, the House leader, said that the ID law was to allow Governor, uh, the former Governor Mitt Romney uh, to win the state of Pennsylvania. All states that have passed voter ID laws have been Republican-led legislatures. Voter ID laws have been accompanying, have, have been accompanied with, cl with closing DMVs in cities. Um, most of most of most of them, which lean Democrat, and some are located far outside the city and maintain limited hours. One in Sauk County in Wisconsin is open the fifth Wednesday of the month, and there are only five months in the year that have fifth Wednesdays. Alabama, Kansas, Mississippi, Texas, and Wisconsin don't have any uh, DMVs that are open Saturdays, which means that the workers will have to block off a day of work to get to a DMV that's too far away for them to take the bus in order to get the free ID to vote. More than one million eligible voters live more than 10 miles away from a DMV slash photo ID issuing office that is open more than twice a week. Older people with expired licenses that may have voted in every election since they were a voting age will be excluded unless they can find forms of ID, and married women whose names have been changed um, may need more documentation reflecting that change. Combined with voter ID laws, there are also pushes to confirm citizenship make voter, and make voter registration harder. I haven't seen one single bill that calls for forms or any kind of voter education to be conducted as far as to what are acceptable forms of ID and what isn't. Some people may be out of the loop regarding what, who, who the candidates are, let alone what forms of ID may be acceptable. And again, education has not been placed in in the uh, context of the bills in wisconsin a sign was taken down for free voter id and it was mandated that they could that the sign be taken down and they had to ask for it before receiving one and sometimes um you cannot get the voter id and your actual um id in uh, at the, the same time they said, said that there had to be something um well um, that, that there had to be an additional step or so, something like that before um, you can get your voter ID also. Um, I've only heard that from one source. I haven't, um, that hasn't been uh, confirmed um, yet, but it was a state representative, I believe, in Missouri, um, or, or it was was a Democrat in another um, state that, that, that offered that piece of in, in information. Now, making voter making voter registration harder to do is, is another aim of these laws. Um, recently, um, but last year, I participated in a massive voter registration drive that got 300 people uh, signed up. Doing that would be very difficult because nobody else nobody has their birth certificate on them, and then they have to go t directly to a DMV. So that would make that a heck of a lot harder for, for someone to get people registered. And in fact, most registration drives happen when people don't have any kind of identification on them because they do not carry um, their birth certificates, their social security card, and different other forms of identification that would be um, necessary to have under these laws. Now, Maine and Michigan, or Maine and Minnesota, currently have election day registration, and Maine um, last year repealed a, a, a ban on same-day registration, uh, election day re registration, rather, same-day voting, rather, yes. 
Um, now, a, a Minnesota also has that, but a constitutional amendment could make that a thing of the past. Other states that may have this can suffer the same fate if a voter ID law is passed in that state. Reducing early voting and absentee uh, days have been passed in Florida, Georgia, Ohio, Tennessee, and West Virginia. And Florida and Iowa have made it harder to restore voting rights for former felons. And South Dakota has recently passed a law imposing further restriction on people with felony convictions by denying voter rights on to by also denying uh, voter rights to people on probation as well as requiring a full sentence to be completed before restoring voter rights. Now this is a heavy GOP assault on voter rights that has swept the nation since Indiana passed its law in 2005 and it was upheld by the Supreme Court in 2008. The smack of ALEC American Legislative Exchange Council's handprint and I remember another person saying all people should not be allowed to vote because quote they don't understand what's going on. So I guess that it includes dedicated viewers of Fox News. Uh, Pennsylvania's law uh, went on on trial and the verdict will be handed down any minute. Um, I am hoping that the law will be enjoined while it's being challenged. And I believe that, um, that it, um, I'm really sincerely hoping that the verdict is handed down before November so that um, so that the November election will be, they'll, they'll have enough time um, if it is upheld to, to get ID before the November election. And that if it is not, if, if it is overturned, that it will not affect the event, uh, November election. And again, like I said, Mike Terzai of Pennsylvania said that the reason for the voter ID law was to give Mitt Romney an edge. Now people may, may say that, oh, it can't be concluded that it did get, give him an edge. The fact is, that was the intention behind it and i think on that merit alone it should be overturned so these voter id laws um um i feel that if, if you really want to protect the voter the the integrity of the elections i say that one thing that should happen is simply cross-referencing uh, the board of election role with um, the deceased role over at the vital statistics um department and get, gathering whatever information so that dead people can be removed from, from purged from the voter rolls. But also, I would think that um, a registration card should be proof, adequate proof of, ide um, of, of at least residence. And by um, residence, one can, um, can make some inference of identity. Um, although, if anything, you have to have an address uh, for a voter registration card to be sent to in order to get it. So, um, those are two remedies that I I think would definitely would definitely help a little bit. Um, these 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 voter ID laws don't help it at all. Um, it simply takes an individual um, too much time, too much effort. Um, when in fact. Um, and time and effort is going to be taken whether or not they, they have to, to have ID if they want to be informed. But the whole point of this vote voter ID thing is they're closing DMVs in, in, in the cities where, where there is a democratic advantage in order to force them one out and two to say, well, they're lazy, they don't want to, they don't want to vote. But also the other part about it is it's just like, Reg, um, like the drug test, mandatory drug testing of welfare recipients, it doesn't work in Wisconsin. It's seven million to to make that that um, it's seven million to implement the the law, but yet he's saying that there's not not enough money there for much of anything that's for the people. So anyway, enjoy this video um, and have a great day. No to voter ID.